Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to 314, our course on media and technology. Could somebody please pray? And then we will get started. Anyone could unmute your mic and please pray with the class. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for your grace. Thank you for this class, Lord. Lord, as we learn, help us to understand and receive. Thank you for all things, Lord. We surrender to you in Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. So we are coming close to the end of this course. I, we have just uh, two main topics left. One is uh, software platforms, uh, which I'll just kind of run through today. Just um, give us an idea uh, of uh, software plat platforms that we could use for the ministry. And then tomorrow uh, will be the last chapter, which is a little bit on data protection and privacy. Just share a little bit on that. And uh, I'll just do a quick run through or overview of everything we've covered in this course on media and technology and ministry. And then what we will do is uh, I will uh, just post a simple assignment. It will be a non-technical assignment. So it's don't get worried, like, oh, I, am I going to be asked technical questions? No, no, that's not the purpose of this course. Uh, it was, it's just the purpose of this course, just to expose you to you know, different things that are available there. Uh, in, in, in media and technology. So it'll be a non-technical assessment just to make sure that you've followed along through this course. So we'll post that uh, after next uh, next week or the week after, and it, it shouldn't take you more than two hours to finish, okay? So we are most likely going to be done with the course content uh, for this course tomorrow. Uh, we'll see how things go, but most likely that's what's gonna happen. Now, um, Last week, uh, uh, there were some questions about costing, you know, how much do things cost? So I just went and, you know, got that information from our team. So I've shared one PDF, uh, which is uh, this PDF. I've shared an addendum, uh, which gives a costing of uh, audio equipment. Uh, if you wanted for an auditorium with 500 to 1,000 people. So this is kind of what we have. So I'm just giving you the cost. Now, all of these are in Indian rupees. So depending on, you know, whichever country uh, you want currency, you want to convert it to. So please convert it to that. I thought I'll convert it to US dollars, but, you know, I'll just leave it as it is. So I just shared this PDF. This is all, you know, what what the cost is in Indian rupees if we were to purchase these things locally uh, and uh, you can convert it to the currency you want. But this is, let's say, this is what we have uh, currently in use at our main location. So all locations don't have this. It's in our main location, which we call a central. That's where all this equipment is being used and uh, that's what it roughly costs, right? So uh, it is, little more than what I had mentioned when Elisha had asked me the question. I'd given him a modest thing for just, you know, a smaller setup. But this is something a little bit more elaborate is what we're using. Now, we we didn't start like this, right? When we first started 20 years ago, it was very, very, very simple. We had three simple mics and one small mixer and two speaker boxes. That's it. So when we actually started, it was very, very, very basic, very small. And so, you know, over time, slowly we upgraded. So what this is, is, you know, we're in a, in a little bit more mature state place. So we can afford to have something like this, but we didn't start like this. Okay. Just to keep in mind. So don't, if you are starting your church, your ministry, don't get discouraged by seeing all these equipment. So I can't. You know, I, I can't have all this right now. You know, you know, we never started with this. Uh, we got, we came to this only more recently. Okay, so that's the first thing. 
Uh, the next thing was uh, another question was uh, on the video equipment that we use. Uh, I just went and got the again the the costing of it. So I'll just share it. Uh, it was just you know the line item. So I'll just share it in the uh, chat here. So for our, I mean, and again, this these are local amounts. Okay, these these are not uh, you know. But you can try to see what it cost you in your place. But I said, you know, we, we rent three cameras. Uh, so each one uh, of these cameras that we rent, Sony FX6 with the video tripod and the camera, is about um, 6,500 uh, rupees uh, we pay. Uh, and then also we rent uh, the LED wall. So actually we have three uh, um, sections. So you don't need to have that much, but we have a big, LED wall at the back, and then we also have two on the side, uh, so that people can see clearly because of the the way the auditorium is. So for that, we spend uh, uh, thirty-two thousand six hundred approximately. Uh, again, these are just numbers from here locally, uh, and of course, it doesn't. Uh, this cost doesn't include their local transportation and. Uh, and the labor charges, you know, for people to come and set it up and all that. But this is just the rental costs of the equipment. So this is to give you an idea. I mean, whether, whether these these, num these numbers obviously will not make sense uh, in another place. I'm just sharing with you what we are spending. But probably gives you some indication. Uh, uh, so we rent these things. And uh, it, per Sunday cost is so much. Um, but I think overall it serves well because, uh, you know, people need to be able to hear well, they need to be able to see well, and plus now we have audience still uh, now, even though, uh, you know, pandemic is more or less gone and people are back into in-person services, we still have a good number of people who connect online to the live stream and who also watch the video after that. So having a good video production is useful for them. Uh, and uh, so it's worth spending uh, money on the cameras and so on. So that's just to give you an information on that. Um, so today, what I want to do is just to quickly share with you uh, this part on software platforms that you could use for your ministry. Right. And again, I'm going to just run through, uh, let me just... Sorry, I think I just should share my screen. Uh, one minute. I will share my screen so then I can move across to yeah. So um, what I want to do is just uh, you know. Uh, uh, in the work that we do as a church or a Christian ministry, it's good to make use of software uh, platforms that are available for various things. And um, uh, it's good that uh, wherever possible, I'm not, I, I understand that uh, not every church or every ministry can make use of all these things, but I'm just sharing with you um, what we do, uh, what we use. And uh, you know, if if there's things that are relevant, you're most welcome to make use of them. At least you're aware of these things. So now, all of us are familiar in using software for our regular office work. You know, a lot of work that we do today is um, making use of um, these office productivity software. Whether you use Microsoft Office Suite or you know, Word, spreadsheets, power presentations, emails, or you could use um, a Google a suite of tools, um, um, which is free. Uh, so either one, you know, is fine. But it really helps if everybody is, you know, makes use of these tools for email, for documents, for calculation, you know, spreadsheets and presentations and all that. I think it's almost like a given these days that uh, people who work in an office environment are good in these things, are familiar with these things. So um, that's a good thing to do. Make sure that uh, in your church or your ministry, you have people trained in these things, and then everybody agrees to work 
you know, in, in this fashion using um, uh, uh, documents and spreadsheets and so on. Um, secondly, uh, we use an accounting software. Uh, here in India, we, we, we use what is known as Tally. Uh, you may use something different in your part of the world. Uh, but this is for, of course, managing your finances, the finances that come into your church or your ministry. So make sure that you do use an accounting software. And I think some of this we covered last semester when we talked about uh, church administration. So uh, uh, make sure you you know your, your, your all your finances are tracked and managed in a relevant software system, accounting software for your organization. Right? The third thing, and now uh, I, I want to just mention here that uh, what, one of our uh, our approaches has been to use. Uh, open source software, meaning uh, where, wherever possible, we try not to pay licenses, but use what's available, open source, and then we host it. And you know, so we just uh, the, our expense would be the hosting part of it. We have, we, we host it ourselves, and so we can fully have fully, fully control and we customize the product as we need to. So that's been our approach, uh, rather than paying licenses. And you know, that's a good thing because you can save a lot of money. Uh, uh, using these open source products. So a lot of the things that I've mentioned here are actually open source products uh, and you're welcome to, you know, uh, get them for your own church, for your own ministry. Uh, if you have a few IT people who can help you out, that'll be very useful. So I, I, I will, I'll just mention these and then I'll walk you through it. Some of you may be familiar with it. So for managing other people, uh, this is meaning our church people, our congregation. Uh, we use Rock Aramis, um, and I've shared this with you uh, before. But uh, so I just give you a quick uh, intro on that. Then for our staff management, that is, this is to manage our church staff and consultants, people who work for the church. Uh, we use a uh, HRM. Uh, we use uh, a human resource management software. Uh, so that is to, it helps us in, in, in a number of things, uh, record the time, the hours of work, so people are going to get paid uh, for leave. Uh, we are right now also using it for our recruiting. So the person who's kind of handling recruiting puts in selected candidates into that. And then from there, I pick it up and, you know, the interview process goes forward. Uh, we It also has capabilities for uh, performance review. We are not using that feature as yet, but hopefully, We'll start using that as well. Our reviews are being done, you know, and, and independently of that. But the human resources management software helps you take care of your church staff. And again, this is an open source product. Uh, project management uh, management is if you want to run projects, and this is typically for the IT team to manage IT projects. Uh, of course, it can be used for other projects as well, but this is mainly designed for that, uh, for running the various IT projects, and that's. Uh, or again, an open source project. For websites, all of our websites are built with Joomla. Uh, again, it's an uh, open source content management product. Church app uh, runs on uh, custom church apps. Uh, we will prob we will you know likely be building our own, but we are using this uh, hosted service provider. Uh, our e-learning platform uses an open source uh, software called Open edX. That's where uh, all our e-learning courses run on. Uh, website Analytics uses an open source product called Matomo. Matomo. Um, that's again, uh, something I've shown, shown you. Our email list server uses another open source product called PHP list. We also manage our inventory. Um, we, uh, that is, we track all our, all our assets. Actually, there are two ways you can. I mean, I mentioned an open source uh, ERP product here, uh, but we actually use uh, um, a different product, uh, which I will, I will show you. I'll just give you a demo of that. Uh, then, for as a repository, which is, uh, we just started doing this. Uh, we want to, you know, document all our best practices. We want to uh, have a central repository for all our document artifacts and other things. So we are using Bookstab app. We just set that up. 
and uh, church metrics is for us to track, you know, church attendance and so on and so forth. So uh, all of these are free. Now, of course, there are there are trade-offs, meaning, you know, somebody will look at this list and say, well, you've got so many different uh, software products running. It's a big, it's a challenge to maintain it. You know, I agree that um, uh, having, you know, so many different systems running uh, is a big challenge. I understand that. Um, then, you know, the, 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 the common comment would be, why don't you use one, one what is known as an enterprise resource planning, so just one, some, one unified software platform for all of these things. So what I mentioned there, odo.com, is an enterprise resource planning system, but it's not it's not geared towards church work as such. It's more for a corporate organization type thing. So uh, you know, we, 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 we had to decide, do you want uh, the best in breed for certain things that you want to do, or do you want a very generalized corporate software then to try to customize it, you know, is, is going to be a challenge. So we've taken the second option, which is let's use the best in breed for specific things that we want to do. Uh, yes, it means that we'll have, you know, uh, eight or nine different platforms running, but at least we get the best things that we, that that they afford to give us uh, rather than something that's more generic as an ERP. So that's our approach. Uh, and I'll just quickly show you what these things are so you could uh, um, just get a feel of it. And I've given you the list, the PDF there. So uh, in case you feel, uh, you know, in case you feel like uh, your organization, your church would want to use any of these things, you can always uh, go there. Uh, go there and, uh, you know, use any, any of these things. Um, if you want to make use of them, okay? So, uh, uh, again, just to reiterate, other than, you know, Microsoft Office and um, um, the accounting software, everything else is open source, meaning it's free. You can have your own installation of it. Uh, you don't have to pay for the software. Uh, so you can take it, set it up for your church or your ministry and customize it the way you want it. Uh, so that's a big plus, right? So I'll just quickly uh, give us a little overview. Uh, some of these things I may have shown you in the past. Uh, uh, so forgive me if there's a little bit of overlap or repetition, uh, but um, I'll just give you an overview and then we'll be done with this. Okay, so you just get a look at, uh, look at these things. Okay. All right. So our HRM, um, this is where, this is the human resource management software that I was mentioning. Uh, basically, when you log in, uh, you know, uh, this is where, uh, so this is an administrative view. So I, I've logged in as an administrator. Uh, typically, people, you know, they report their, their timesheet here. I haven't filled up my timesheet for the last couple of days, but Generally, you know, we 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 report our work hours here, and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, at the at the Monday of every following week, people usually submit their timesheets, and then we have our admin person approve them, go through them, and so on. But you see, there are a lot of things that can be done here. People apply for leave here. Um, we can see who's applying for leave. Um, uh, our recruitment process happens here. Uh, we can see, you know, so these people are kind of going through the recruitment process, or maybe we've got some of them have, you know, some some of these positions already filled. But uh, so candidates come in here, and then we go through the take them through the recruitment process. Uh, we can maintain a directory of all our staff here. Uh, performance reviews could be done. We're not using this part, but we will start using it. So we could do staff performance reviews for our staff. Um, uh, people also can submit their expense claims. That means, you know, reimbursements. They can submit it here. So it has all of these features typically to manage all our uh, staff. 
right? So that's the uh, HRM here. Just a quick uh, overview of it, uh, but it really helps us. And then, of course, if you want to have some communication happening, uh, we, we don't use this, but it, it, is, it is there if you want to make some announcements and so on and so forth. Uh, this, this information is useful, okay? So uh, this is our uh, the Orange HRM, which I mentioned, is a free open source software. Um, the this is what we use uh, for asset management, right? So I'm not logging into our actual product because if I log in there, you'll be able to see all our license numbers and other information. But I'll just show you this demo of the product. This is what it generally looked like. So, uh, so basically, you can, you know, we, like we said, we buy all these equipments, we buy licenses uh, for certain software, which is like for graphics, uh, Adobe, Adobe uh, computers, um, uh, uh, Adobe, Microsoft, and some maybe a few other software that we need licenses for. Uh, but we buy a lot of assets. That's, you know, all our hardware, computers, uh, and so on. So we need to track them. Where are they? Who has it? Or what is the model number and all? So we use uh, this asset management software. It looks like this. I'm just showing you a demo, but if I log into our account, you would, you know, you probably would see a lot of uh, confidential information. So, but we track all our assets here, and we know where it is, who's who's having it, and so on. So that's what happens here. And we try to maintain our inventory. So uh, every three months, we do a check and update, you know, okay, this is where the um, the product is or that uh, microphone is or that camera is or that laptop is. But even with all that, you know, it's, it's, it is a challenge uh, keeping track of things because we have so many different locations and events happening that these products keep moving, you know, uh, different places. and. Uh, it's 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 real challenge to keep track of things so that things don't get lost. But we we use this to track. Um, so um, repository. All right. So this is the repository. It's actually it's actually Bookstack app. But this is where we are. We just started doing this recently. Is where we try to. Um, we are our work. We're working towards um, maintaining a central place of uh, keeping all our documentation, best practices across um, uh, various ministries. So, uh, so uh, you know, not, not everything. So, it, this is the other concept: is bookshelf. So, every ministry is a bookshelf. So, you see, accounting bookshelf, Bible college. You know, they all have a bookshelf. And within them, there can be many books. So you know, this is where we would write all our details. And a book can have many pages. So this is the database of all our vendors. So this particular vendor database will have all the vendors for you know different. Uh, so these are our approved vendors. So anybody can go in there, look up the vendors. They'll have their uh, contact information. And uh, if we need for any event, we need, you know, uh, I need to call somebody. Okay, you can call them and so on. So that's what uh, this whole thing is. And we are we just started working on this. So all the ministry leaders uh, will have to you know put in all the information, but everybody has access to it, so they can go in, uh, read, make use of the information, uh, and and so on. So this is our repository. Okay. Um, I have shown you our church management system, e-learning. All of you are familiar with e-learning, which we use. This is our online portal. So we are using Open edX for this. Uh, this, again, a free software. It's hosted on Open edX, And this is that's how this is set up. And I think most of you are familiar with the e-learning part. Um, church management. Yeah, church management system. So this is actually built on an, a free um, system. I've shown this to you before, where um, uh, we, uh, you know, we have uh, 
when you log in, we have people's birthdays and so on. And um, uh, we can you know, look up people's information here uh, and contact them. We keep track of our interactions with them, people from the church, and uh, so on. So uh, this is built on Rock RMS, uh, again, an open source product. So we track people. And it, you know, it's only people who are actually doing member care and so on who have access to this. Right. And then from here, we generate, you know, we could generate reports. Uh, we can extract information uh, based on location and so on. Uh, we can pull data. So if you want to send them an email, we want to send them a WhatsApp message, we want to send a target group, you know, certain, uh, usually an e email or so on. So we, we can extract information and target them here and, and so on. So this is the um, church management system that we have um yeah e-learning okay projects um so this is what i said uh, we uh, would use for our id projects we uh, are not actively using this at the moment but we're going to start transitioning here so you could list out all your and uh, this is mainly for it uh, you could list out all our it projects here and then we create tasks um classroom I, we haven't used that for a while but you can you know for each project uh, you could create tasks and then you could assign the tasks to various people um, and uh, you know and then follow up on those tasks and those activities and so on so we haven't really actually started using this we've got this set up but you know we're in the process of building the id team and allocating work and so on so right now it's it's more of a, because the team is small. Uh, it's a little, a little uh, it's just direct communication through emails and so on. But our goal is to move the whole team to work using our open project to manage our teams and our uh, tasks and so on, mainly for the IT team. And they'll be working on all of these um, different projects uh, that are going on, uh, which basically is for the IT team. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that's covered most of that. Yeah. Let me see anything more in the PDF that I needed to cover. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I think I've shown you most of the um, products that we are using. Um, any any quick questions so this is just to give you an idea of look you can have these software packages installed for your organization or church and you can use these things for various functions are things that you want to carry out uh, any quick questions that you have on this Okay, no questions. All right, so um, Bill, I think that's that's all I wanted. I just wanted to give you an idea of uh, software platforms that you could use. Uh, okay, Elisha's question, are these free to use app or? Yes, so Elisha, in the list, in the PDF that I shared with you, um, everything after the accounting software so even you can get free you know open source accounting software but we are just using we are using a commercial software for our accounting package because it kind of takes into account the uh, the local I indian government regu regulations along which is a little difficult to keep up with so that software help package helps us take care of that um other than that all the others that i've mentioned in this list are free open source so you could download them, uh, you know, from the, I've shared you the, the links of the websites where you can download them from. And whatever you need, you can have some people set it up for you. And then you can customize it for your organization, which is what we've done. Right? So we customize it and we put it to use for our organization. So almost, you know, after the accounting software, everything else is open source and it's free. So you can download and use them. So if um, I were to say, you know, it's good to have, uh, especially if you're a local church, it's good to have something where you manage all your 
uh, the in information of your church people. Uh, you know, uh, so if Rock RMS is one that you could use, it's designed for churches uh, and it's an open source product, so you can take it and customize it, use it. Uh, a paddle to that, of course, is what, you know, uh, in the industry, in, in, in uh, industries, they use a they uh, use a CRM, a customer relationship management software, but then it's not tailored for church. Uh, you can put it to work, but since you have a product that's built for church, Rock RMS, it's useful to take that and use it. So I'd encourage if you have a few IT people who can help you, I'd encourage you to set it up and use it for your church. Uh, you know, any once your congregation goes above 100 people, then it's very difficult to track people, their birthdays, their anniversaries, how, you know, uh, using spreadsheets. And, uh, you know, but if you have something like a church management system, it makes so many things easier. You can track, you can put comments there, you know, that the last time I spoke to them, this is what they said, and so on. And, uh, and if you have multiple pastors and people working, at least you can see the comments. So when I look at a you know when I look at a person's information, I just look at the comments and see that oh, somebody from our church spoke to them on this date, and they made this request. Okay, so I get a quick idea of okay what's going on. So that's very useful. Um, so Christopher's question: Do these software support multi-site, multi-country? So. Um, the church management software, yes, it's, uh, you know, we have people, uh, for example, we use that same thing for all our Bible college students. Um, so all our Bible college students' data is also in uh, an installation of uh, Rock RMS, which is people from all over the world, uh, or many countries of the world. Uh, so that's, so the answer is, yeah, the Rock RMS supports it. And uh, the other software also, you know, like, for example, HRM, uh, you could have people from anywhere in the world access and support work on it. And yeah, so all all of these products can be used uh, from with global access. Yeah, so you're hosting it online. They access it from anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? High level. I know this is very high level, but uh, you know, I thought I'd keep it simple. All right. Um, so keep this list handy with you. The list of products. Um, whenever you feel it need. You can go back to this and see if any one of these products are useful for your church or your ministry. And of course, you could always search online, you know, maybe a couple of years down the road, there may be better products available, then obviously use what's be better and best. And uh, if any time you need help, you're free to email us. You know, we have our IT team, people are there. So if you have any questions, you email us, we'd be happy to share whatever knowledge, whatever learning we have with you to help you in you know, getting things set up for your church or your ministry. We're happy to point you in the right direction and assist you. So feel free to reach out. You know, whenever that time comes, you need to set something up. Uh, we're happy to help. Okay. So, Christopher, uh, what are typical website analytics are captured? How about social media metrics? Yeah, so, you know, so uh, Matmo is, is one of the best. So other than Google Analytics, so we have Google Analytics, which tracks all our databases, uh, so not all, all our websites, sorry. So Google Analytic, Analytics is already, um, all, all our websites are there on, uh, and it's being tracked by Google Analytics. In addition to that, we have uh, our own installation of Matamo where it also tracks and gives us information on what's happening. So there are two uh, uh, analytic products that are tracking what's going on on our website. 
uh, okay so your question is what are the analytics so what we I mean uh, actually to answer your question there are just numerous data points that are being captured uh, perhaps I should say a lot more than what we even look at uh, typically right but what is of interest to us would be uh, from what Matmo does is okay which countries uh, how much time do they spend uh, what are the main pages they're looking at and maybe what devices are they coming from so this would be of interest you know so for us okay these are the countries people are coming from this is where they are going how much time they're spending so on. but there are lots of other data points that are being captured which actually data we are not actually looking at on the Google Analytics side we also get a report on the performance of our website in terms of hey these links are broken these pages are not rendering well they're not showing up well on the mobile um, etc so we use that to keep improving our website um, uh, so for each of our website Google gives us that report so which we can see uh, because example our, our church APC web, website has like maybe several thousands of pages uh, so we can't do this manually but it's nice that we get a report through Google uh, Search Console that you know, the, this is how the website is performing. We also get a number of, uh, we get other information like um, how many clicks came through this month. So month on month, we can see uh, where, what were the search keys, searches for which the website was shown. What are the top searches for which you know a particular web page was shown. So that's interesting for us. Uh, and uh, where did they come from? You know, what device, what search? Uh, obviously, they're searching on Google, but uh, what device were they searching from? So, but these are just a few of the data points we're looking at. But Google gives us a lot more information, which we actually don't use. About social media metrics, yes. So YouTube, Facebook have their own analytics pages, uh, which we can see. Uh, again, over there, gen what is of interest to us is how many people, which countries, uh, and also how long have they been looking at. So every, I think every Monday, I would get an, uh, inf uh, one of our IT people informs me, okay, uh, for the live stream yesterday, these were the number of concurrent users, live users, who are watching. Um, and then, uh, of course, there are a lot of people who would watch afterwards, of which we will see. But uh, that gives us, you know, okay, almost like our live stream attendance. That means these are people who are actually attending the service live, uh, which we can see. Uh, and then we also have the numbers for those who watch it afterwards. But every Monday we take a look at uh, how many were actually watching us live. And we see that, okay, that's the average uh, of what's happening on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, uh, so on. Yeah, so that those 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 metrics we take and uh, we observe we track them we follow them yeah. any other questions okay so uh, that's that's about it for today tomorrow uh, what I'll do is in this in this class we'll just have a you know short five ten minutes on uh, data protection, just keeping information secure. And then I'll just do a quick run through of all that we covered in the course on uh, media and technology, just to kind of give us a full picture of all the different things we spoke about. Uh, so that you have these things in mind. Uh, it's not something you have to memorize or you know, uh, you're going to be tested on technically, no. Uh, just so that you know that these things are available. And as and when you find a need in your ministry, you start using these things. And uh, you're welcome to reach out to us in the future uh, if you need any help. And we'd be happy to guide you, right? So with that, let's close for today. Uh, somebody could pray and dismiss us, please.
I'd like to pray. Angie, go ahead. Sorry, Elisha, go ahead. Heavenly Father, once again, we want to appreciate you and thank you for your great love. We thank you for the gift of life and we thank you for the opportunity to have engaged in this class. We pray that, oh God, whatever that you have been taught, may it be recorded whenever it is needed in our ministries and in our service to you. We pray that you continue to keep us until we meet again. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you for patiently enduring all this. <laughs> I hope these things are useful uh, in the days to come. Okay. See you all tomorrow. God bless. Have a good afternoon. Good day.